Hey, what's up guys? It's your man 4M again with a new V Rising guide. Today, I'm gonna show you my ultimate early game build, which is gonna make it very easy to get through the Farbay Woods. All the boss encounters and camp farming is gonna be no problemo for you. The great thing about it is, is that it doesn't have many requirements. It's very simple to set up. Half of the spells can even be accessed from the very beginning of the game. The weapons and armor you require are also very simple to get. So I'm going to walk you through how you can get your hands on everything, how the spells work, what you should use as weapon as well. So let's get right to it. So once again, guys, this is an early game build. It allows you to snowball your way through the Farbane Woods, get to the center of the map, the mid game, let's say as quick as possible. Works very well from level 0 to 30. I even managed to take down Scully targets with it, which are basically 10 or more levels above you. But this is exactly the build which I used for all the footage which you're going to see in the coming minutes. So I worked with basic gear. I already have better gear, but for the sake of this video, I want to show you that this works very well. So power level 3 or gear level 3, Night Stalker armor, a simple bone ring, and then also a straw hat and traveler's wrap. I'm gonna make a video for this one by the way, but uh, you can tell that we have a pretty low gear level. Uh, the one that makes it pretty high is the copper axis, but you can also work with the previous tier weapons, but just wanna make sure that you get your hands on the frenzy, which is a dash forward with your axis to strike the first enemy, deal a lot of physical damage. I'm gonna explain you in a second how we use these axes, but let's move on to the abilities. So, these can be accessed from the very beginning of the game. The Veil of Blood travel ability, I think it's still one of the best, if not the best travel ability, as it gives you so much more survivability. Basically, you dash towards an enemy, then you hit it, and you will heal yourself for 5% of your maximum HP, which I think is very nice. Then also the Chaos Volley. By the way, you can also use uh, the Shadow Bolt if you want to from the very beginning. But I'm going to show you exactly where you can get your hands on this bad boy, the nice thing about this spell is that the projectiles fly really fast, so um, it's going to be pretty easy to hit them. And then, last but not least, we also have the Blood Rite. This is also one which you get from the start, but I still think it's very good as it deals AoE damage. At the same time, you will heal yourself for a large amount of HP, which is very powerful. Once again, adds up to that survivability. Then, last but not least, we also have the Merciless Charge. I personally think this one isn't even necessary. I actually use it for escape purposes most of the time, but it is pretty useful to stun enemies, even bosses. So before we get into some gameplay, let's show you exactly where you can get your hands on these abilities. So we're going to go to the Blood Altar. By the way, guys, make sure to build this one if you don't have the abilities yet. The first target is Lydia the Chaos Archer. After you've taken this one down, also in the Farbane Woods, you will be rewarded with uh, the Devourer Structure and also the Chaos Volley. So make sure to hunt this one down. Then, for the Merciless Charge, you're gonna have to deal with Quincy, the Bandit King. Once again, guys, this ultimate is an optional ability. It's not necessary at all. I barely use it, but you're gonna have to deal with this guy in the end anyways, as he basically introduces you to the mid-game. Anyways, let's move on to using these abilities. So first off, the dash. You want to use your melee attack before the shadow goes away, let's say. You have about two seconds, a little bit more, but that will allow you to heal yourself. Then also for the block, do this counter when an enemy is about to hit you. It will deal a lot of damage, area of effect damage, so you can deal damage to all the enemies around you. And then of course for the chaos bolts, this is pretty easy. You just um, aim for their heads and it will do the job. Then for the Axis, this ability I think is very interesting both for damaging, closing gaps, but also escaping. So basically if you see an enemy, if it's running away, you can leap and deal a ton of damage. But at the same time, if you have these rounds or circles on the floor where bombs are going to be dropped, you can just dash out of them and dash back to your enemy. So this gives you a lot of maneuverability. So let's move on to some gameplay. The first encounter right here is against a patrol of Scully targets. Basically all 10 or more levels above me, so this should be a pretty big challenge, but it's no big deal if you use a combination of these abilities. Basically, I use my access to engage, then also if I am in trouble, I can always dash away with my standard dash. But then, of course, if you are out of range of the melee, you can also use those Chaos Bolts to do a little bit of range damage. It's also going to be easier to dodge projectiles of enemies. But if they are very close to you, if you cannot escape, simply use your block 
And if they do hit you in this time window, you will deal a lot of AoE damage, knock them back a little bit, and of course heal yourself while you're at it. So it's a very nice combo of abilities. There is a very good rotation as a cooldown of all these spells is pretty low and it's very easy to re-engage, disengage from combat, let's say, with both the axes and the regular dash. Of course, I don't have to explain that the timing of your block has to be just right. Too early or too late will result in big hits in your face, can even lead to death, which is pretty scary. For example, with the archer right here, I had a second ability ready, so I actually triggered it a little bit too fast and dashed away after that, so I was able to take her down with that slash and heal up. Right here, we have a little boss fight against Grayson the Armor. Thank God I had the Shades of the Tree because it was midday. But I think this one is very nice to showcase the block ability. So every time when he was about to hit me, I basically used my block. And you can see that I take absolutely no damage and heal myself at the same time. Of course, when he's about to swing me, when this one is on cooldown, I can always escape from it with either my axe dash or the regular one. And if I take a little bit of range, I can use my chaos bolts to deal even more damage. Once again, just wait for the other abilities to be on cooldown and then continue the rotation. When I was on the road to another boss fight, I basically got one shot by a Scully Brute right here. So you can see that they hit like a truck, but I actually wanted to have his blood. So I decided to engage him once again. This is a very important tip, guys. If you have Brute Blood, this basically allows you to have lifesteal with your standard attacks. So this is also when I decided to go after this guy. You can say that I have a death wish, but basically if you lure him out in the open, it's actually pretty easy to take him down with the Chaos Bolts. You're just gonna dance around them, wait for them to do their attacks and then dash behind them with a blood dash. Of course, if you see when they are attacking with their base attacks, you can always use your block, which is gonna make it very easy to negate all the damage. So there you go, the Brute is down, we get our hands on a buff which gives us lifesteal in combat, makes this Berserker build, let's say, even more interesting as you can constantly heal yourself in combat. Okay, so there you have it, pretty much everything you need to know for this build. During the outro, I'm gonna show you a little bit more gameplay against Clive the Firestarter as he was pretty interesting to deal with as well. With this build, you have so much maneuverability to disengage from combat and re-engage especially with these explosions, but it wasn't a problem at all. So guys, if you enjoyed watching this video, if it was helpful, make sure to hit that like button as it helps out the channel big time. Already very much appreciated. And of course, if you have suggestions for future videos, if you have questions about V-Rising in general, let me know in the comments down below. Of course, you are very welcome on our community Discord with thousands of members. We also have our own server for V-Rising, so definitely make sure to check it out. Anyways, right now it's 4 a.m. out. I'm going to wish you an awesome day. Happy hunting. Till next time. Peace.